California, I used to go to Los Angeles and carouse, and Howard found this girl, uh, and he fell in love with her. Her name was Janie, and oh, he loved Janie. And then when we got transferred back to uh, the East Coast, he he wanted to get back to California and marry Janie. He was going to marry Janie no matter what. So anyway. They were asking for volunteers because this was when the big push was coming and they were going to invade Japan. So anyway, Howard volunteers to go back to California and he goes back to Camp Pendleton, gets in this company and they're packed up and ready to leave, but they don't know what day they're going to leave. And he gives the commanding officers this big sob story that he wanted to get married before he goes overseas. and. Uh, and they fell for it and they give him a two-day pass. He goes into Los Angeles, but he didn't marry her, but uh, he married her when he came back from overseas. But while he was in on his two-day leave, they, shipped, they packed up the whole company and they shipped him overseas. And uh, he lucked out, he didn't have to go. And then the war ended and he, uh, he got discharged from Camp Pendleton. That's why he got back to Cincinnati. He was from Cincinnati, and that's why he got back to Cincinnati before I did. Well, I got uh, discharged from Quantico, Virginia, uh, and I didn't want to go to Cleveland for a few days. I wanted to take a vacation and stop in Cincinnati, so I go down to the train station and I give the tra head train master this big sob line and story. I said, the last thing the Marine Corps did to me was screw me. They give me a ticket to Cleveland. I'm not from Cleveland, I'm from Cincinnati. So they fell for that and they changed my ticket to Cincinnati. Anyway, we get down there and we're out carousing every night. And uh, we were in this bar one night. Well, he didn't have a job. He didn't know how to earn any money. He didn't know what the hell to do. He'd been in the dry cleaning business, but he didn't really want to get back into that, so he was looking for a job. I don't think he's interested in Howard. Anyway, that's good. That's a good story. <laughs> good story. Uh, so we were in this bar this one night and had these peanut machines on the bar. So we, we decided to lift one of these peanut machines and see how much money was in the peanut machine racket. <laughs> so we take the machine home, we open it up and God it was it was practically empty and full of money, so he says, that's the racket for me. He says, I'm going in the peanut machines. So he goes home, buys a couple hundred machines and puts them in bars all over the place. And that's how he uh, <laughs> earned his living from then on. In fact, I come back, <laughs> I don't know whether I should tell this part or not, but I bought myself a dozen peanut machines here and I had them spread around. Uh, Canoga Park. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I used to take five pounds of peanuts a couple times a week and stop by and just put the peanuts in the machine and on coming time. I don't think they would have appreciated that if they did. I remember seen that. <laughs> Did you remember? Yeah. You had a big burlap bag full of peanuts in the back of your uh, yeah, my truck and I used truck. to whenever things were slow I'd fill my peanut machines. <laughs> Yeah. Howard ended up a millionaire. Yeah. Oh, did well, he? then from then on, Howard got into. He's the one who first started putting uh, lotions and things in drugstores. He did it on. He no, said, he put I'll it put it in, it in and not take He went down to North Carolina and South Carolina, these country stores. They didn't have uh, toothpaste and toothbrushes and. Sunglasses. Even any store did. Even the grocery stores did. Even the grocery time. stores in the South didn't have them. So he put what he called a rack in the store, and uh, God, he ended up with ten salesmen and a route of all through the South. And uh, then he put his money into silver dollars, and he used to go to the uh, bank and buy bags of silver dollars and take out, look through them, and take out all the ones that were worth anything. Ended up a millionaire. <laughs> Me, I worked for the phone company and struggled for 40 years. But I did all right.
for this land and they gave us a little pretty big cock and bull story about how easy it was going to be so and that they might not get back in there to uh, get us provisions so we decided that uh, instead of carrying so many grenades we'd carry a little fruit and a couple sandwiches in our uh, grenade bag so when we got uh, when we landed, we found out that uh, that was a mistake because we needed everything we could get. So we started throwing oranges instead of <laughs> oranges and sandwiches instead of grenades. And uh, I don't know what they thought about that, but it scared the hell out of them. They they ran. explain. You did it at the time because you had to, but later on it uh, your conscience gets you. So anyway, that's it. <laughs>